to be a very worrying situation, and, and I, I think it impacts groundwater as much as it does uh, the surface water as well, and that's even more of a concern. What, what are you seeing in your study? Well, what we're seeing, especially with this drought, which by a lot of different metrics is the worst drought in the history of California, and it's probably the worst drought of the last thousand years, is evidence that while the precipitation deficit is really just kind of natural variability in the atmosphere, um, it's the warm temperatures that are at least partially related to anthropogenic climate change, global warming, that are really have intensified this drought and, and made it much worse than it would have before. And certainly uh, for the summer, the outlook's not good, um, and we're looking at a continuation of the drought probably at least until the fall. Yeah, summer, you never get rain in the summer in California. You rarely get rain in California, period. Um, and being a Californian myself, being you know, born and raised there, we were, we were very conscious of, we always talked about droughts. There was always a drought, you know, some year, and we were told, you know, to conserve water when we were watering our plants outside, and you had a certain day you can water your plants. But this is the first time we're actually uh, getting such a strong restriction, not we, because I don't live there, but people in California, uh, to reduce their consumption by 25%. I understand that 11 trillion gallons are needed for California to recover from this emergency. I mean, how much water does California have left? So surface reservoirs is probably about a, a full year of water, um, but there's obviously still a, a fair bit of, of groundwater uh, left as well. But, you know, as you said, the deficit of this drought is really quite severe. So even if we get a kind of normal rainy season next year, we're still not going to, or California is still not going to recover fully from this drought. And so I think it's kind of forward thinking to really put in these uh, these water restrictions and, and, and try to plan ahead a little bit better. Uh, do, you, do you think there needs to be some sort of seismic shift in how things are done overall, though? I mean, California supplies a lot of the country's food, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, that is, and that is true. But you can tell people not to water the lawn and don't wash the car, but 80% of the usage is agricultural. Does there need to be a shift about where the, the breadbasket of America is? Maybe it's not California anymore. Yeah, I mean, that's a really good point. I mean, it, it, you know, this is an area that's drought prone. I mean, most of the West, including California, sees these type of events happening regularly. Uh, and the problem is that we expect with global warming in the coming decades and next century that, you know, these droughts are going to come probably a little bit more often. They're probably going to be a little bit more severe. And because there's so many people now in these regions, it's going to be that much more impactful. Um, so certainly I think we need to think about for the future strategies for kind of what types of crops we grow, uh, ways that we can be more efficient in our use of irrigation water, uh, and just be a little bit more forward thinking about water resources uh, in the future. Yeah, that leads me to my next question regarding water resources. All are alternative resources being looked into. I read that officials are uh, looking at desalination plants, also uh, reclaiming wastewater. Yeah, there's a lot of efforts underway. I mean, certainly they're trying to, uh, or various cities in California are trying to bring back online desalinization plants that they had built for previous droughts, uh, but were, those plants were basically mothballed when those droughts ended. Uh, and so certainly I think places like San Diego uh, and Santa Barbara that are bringing them back online, you know, that's kind of another strategy to deal with, uh, deal with these droughts now and in the future. It's really a crisis, um, and it's quite extreme. Benjamin Cook with the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies. Thanks so much for the conversation. Thank you.